Hi everyone, Matt Watson here from CarWow, and here I have the best-selling vehicle in the United States of America. It is, of course, the Ford F-150 pickup truck. Now, to put it into perspective, Ford sold almost one million of these things in 2018, whereas in the UK, there were a total of 2.3 million cars sold. That's every single model. This thing has actually been on sale since 1948, and it's now in its 13th generation, had a major update in 2015, and then subsequent model year changes, very minor, just some cosmetic and some kit lists. So, in this video, I'm obviously gonna review this Ford F-150, and to do that, I'm gonna talk you around the exterior design. Looking at the front of this truck, you wouldn't think it was that aerodynamic. Show you inside the cabin, an electronic handbrake, oh, how modern. See how practical it is. Yeah! And yes, take it for a test drive. But before we get into all that, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on so you're alerted when we make a new upload. That way you will not miss a single video. Let's kick off this review by talking about the F-150's design. It's pretty standard fare at the back, but you do have F-150 stamped into the rear tailgate. Also a big Ford badge as well. The lights are pretty basic really, although they do have a bit of a shape to them here. And then you have the FX4 sticker for this particular car because it's got the off-road pack and that includes some rated off-road shock absorbers, a locking rear differential and some skid plates underneath it. It's also got a sport package which includes these machined 18-inch alloy wheels which do look rather nice. Down the side you can see it's the four-door version, it's the larger Super Crew cab. You can also get one with smaller rear doors, the Super Cab, and then there's the normal cab which just has the front doors. Also, this is one key thing of the Ford F-150, this cutout in the door which improves visibility at these side windows. Moving towards the front, we've got the F-150 badge here and it shows that this one is the Lariat model which is kind of mid-spec. Various creases and cutouts in the bonnet, which Ford claims help improve aerodynamics. Now, looking at the front of this truck, you wouldn't think it was that aerodynamic, though, to be fair, none of them are really. Now, we do have some classic Ford styling features here the C headlamps, and within there at night, you get C shaped daytime running lights, which look super, super cool. Then you've got these two big slats in the grille, and once again, a big Ford logo. It's a purposeful look, and it's very, very familiar. Well, it is if you're American. Not so much if you're British like me. Here on the inside, the Ford F-150 is a little bit of a mixed bag. The interior design is generally okay. I like the big centre console, the vertical air vents, and some of the cutouts that you have around the place, and the shinier bits of trim around the air vents, and the silver effect here and here. But then in black, it does feel a little bit on the drab side. Also, the materials are a mixed quality, so some of them are nice and soft up on here and here and here, that's all good. Then other things are cheap as chips. In fact, the door handle's pretty cheap, and the handle itself that you grab feels really flimsy. But I do like the mechanism, the way you hold onto that, and then you just open the door by going like that. That's kind of cool, good idea. The layout of things is generally pretty well thought out as well, so you've got your climate control here. If only some of the buttons were a little bit bigger, those for the heated seats and the ventilated seats, which we have on this particular car, and the fan, a little bit small, so they're hard to touch while you're driving, but it's better than trying to operate them on a screen. Then you've got your media controls there, your four-wheel drive selector down here, and your trailer braking here. Oh, then over here, you have your lights, and down here, an electronic handbrake. Oh, how modern. And on this particular one, the Laureate get adjustable pedals, so you can move them in and out, which is really handy, as well as the fact that you can move the steering wheel up and down on this one electrically, and in and out. Also, the seats are electric on this Laureate model, and they're leather as well. Obviously, that is not standard across the entire range. Now, this particular car has a Sync 3 system, and you get that on all but the entry-level version of the F-150, and it's generally quite nice to use, and we're well used to this in Europe because you get it on Ford's European models. It's easy to work through the menus by pressing these buttons. The navigation system's pretty good as well. I like the fact it gets Android Auto and Apple CarPlay as standard, so you can just run Google Maps always if you want to. It's a good system. It's not the best on the market, but it's pretty solid. Also, on this particular truck, we have got a nice big digital screen in between the analog dials, and it shows lots of different information about the truck, trip info, off-road status, and things like that. In terms of connectivity, you've got a couple of USB sockets down there. Here, you have a 12-volt socket 
and a three pin plug, wow. As for cubby spaces, there are a lot. So here in the door, you've got a little pocket there. Then you've got huge long door bins. You can put a bottle in the front compartment. There's big cup holders as well, and they have good grippers in them. So even if you've got a tall bottle like that, it doesn't flap around. There's a little storage area down there where you can keep your mobile phone. And under here, there's a huge storage bin with a little tray in it if you need to use that. And then on the top of the dash, we have another storage area as well. And you'll notice this car has the Bang & Olufsen sound system, and it is a good sound system system moving up here there's a place for your sunglasses and it's padded inside of course some visor nice and large but will it extend yes it does good so you can extend it out so you don't get sun in your eyes when you're driving around on a twisty road and the sun's moving about all over the place anyway let's see what it's like in the back seats do you know what? I think it's comfier here in the back of this super crew cab version of the F-150 than in the front. The seats are nice and squidgy plenty of headroom loads of knee room you can really stretch out your feet will fit into the chair in front as well look at that loads of room you've also got a completely flat floor so you could stretch out like that helps when you've got three passengers as well as does the fact you've pretty much got an individual seat for the middle passenger here in the rear when you combine that with lots of shoulder room it's comfy even if in the middle in fact it's quite good because you get a good view out without getting blocked by the headrest for the first time ever, I think I might choose to sit in the middle seat. Now, these seats also have ISOX anchor points here and here, so it's good for carrying baby seats and there's loads of room to get them in. The doors are huge and there's plenty of space for you to manoeuvre, even big bulky rear facing seats. You've got an armrest here if no one's sitting in the middle seat, which you can use. And there's a couple of cup holders that extend out of it as well. Lovely, hey? Now, kids will like this. Look, the window ledge is nice and low so you get a good view out huge rear windows and of course as with most pickup trucks this size they go all the way down it does take a while for them to go up though so just bear with me now we'll talk about connectivity down here you've got a couple of usb ports there's also a three pin socket and a 12 volt socket as well this particular truck has upgraded rear seats that are heated Mm, warm bottoms for everyone in terms of practicality you've got a couple of cup holders there but they are quite shallow so bigger bottles will roll around in them there are some door bins but they're a bit of an awkward shape as you can see you can't fit that big bottle in there there is a bit of storage there as well though actually it's all right and you've got massive pockets on the seat backs look they are huge and if you need to carry things in the back rather than people you can flip at these seat bases and then you've got loads of room with a little bit of storage under here so there you go the back of this f-150 is cavernous now I want to talk you guys through the low carrying capability of the F-150. So the tailgate is damped nicely on the way down. Though you don't get any assistance on the way up on this particular version. To get in, you have to step on the edge of the bumper there. Though that's not too much of a problem as I'll explain a little later on in this video. Come on Matt, you can do it. Oh, yeah. Here we are in the low bed. As you can see, this one has the spray coating, so it's nice and grippy, so your load doesn't slosh about all over the place. There's plenty of tie down points. These ones are really rugged on this particular vehicle. And you've got some more there. And they're at each corner as well. You've obviously got lighting as well for your low bed for when you're loading at night. Now, the most impressive thing about this is just the actual low carrying capability. So you can get it as a five and a half foot bed, and that has a capacity of 1500 litres. Then there's a six and a half foot bed with a capacity of 1750 litres. And then there's a huge eight foot bed with a capacity of 2200 litres which is insane then there's the payload right so you can carry a payload of 1500 kilos in this bed and when it comes to towing trailers the f-150 has you covered as well so it can pull a trailer of up to 6.77 tons yes it's a tough truck now, if you want more advice in terms of comparing different trucks, click up there to watch a full in-depth crew test by my friends at Edmunds.com. In fact, I'm going to hand you over to Carlos Lego from Edmunds.com now to talk about five annoying things about the F-150 because he's been living with this very truck here. Away you go, Carlos. This keypad looks like it's from a different time. It's great if you forget your keys, but what happens if you forget your code? This twin turbo V6 makes great power, but in nearly 40,000 miles of driving, we've never been able to get close to the claimed fuel economy. Also, to get best performance, like if you're towing, you should run premium fuel. This shifter is needlessly big, and it takes up so much space that you could use to otherwise store stuff. 
trucks have leaf spring suspensions and that's good for carrying lots of weight, but when the bed's empty, the ride can be a little jittery and some competitors have more sophisticated suspensions that don't have that problem. Power folding rear glass is nice, but I couldn't help but think that Ford could have done a better job hiding that wire. It's not all negative though. Here's the Callaway 5 core features. If you have trouble stepping up into your F-150 low bed, don't worry, for $300 you can get this fold out step. Yeah! Sometimes the running boards on these trucks can be a little bit slippery when it's wet, but this Ford has some chunky plastic bits stuck on them, which really do grip onto your feet. Yeah, look at that, I'm stuck like a fly. Yeah. Some trucks have fuel filler caps you have to unscrew. However, with this Ford, you can just slot your nozzle straight in the hole. Ford makes the body of this thing and the bed out of aluminium and that helps keep the weight down and it means this truck can weigh as little as two tonnes. Have trouble reversing with the trailer, don't worry. Ford's trailer backup assist can help you out. You just turn it on, then all you have to do is turn this dial to say which way you want the trailer to go and the car will automatically steer itself and brake to get the trailer exactly where you want it. All right, then, let's talk about engines. So you can get a three litre V6 diesel with 250 horsepower. Then there's a 3.3 litre V6 naturally aspirated petrol with 290 horsepower. Then there's this 2.7 litre V6 turbo petrol and you can get it for 0 to 60 in just six seconds. Then there's a 3.5 litre V6 turbo petrol with 375 horsepower. Next is a five litre naturally aspirated V8 with 395 horsepower. And then finally, there's a high power 3.5 litre V6 turbo petrol with 450 horsepower. And that goes in the Raptor and it can do naught to 60 in 5.5 seconds, which is insane for a big truck such as this. So all engines come with a 10 speed automatic gearbox, apart from the entry level petrol, which gets a six speed automatic. And you can get the F-150 as rear wheel drive or four wheel drive. Now the range kicks off at $30,000. This F-150 2.7 V6 turbo petrol in Lariat trim comes in at $47,000. Now, if you want to compare prices, you can't get a car wow because we don't do these big trucks. So instead, go to edmunds.com and the link's in the description below. Okay, let's find out what this F-150 is like to drive. So, first of all, let's talk about the engine. 2.7 litres in a big truck like this. Are they mad? But no, actually, it works quite well. Considering this is pretty much one of the engine level engines, that gives good performance. That is strong performance, actually. I am amazed. Because you've got 10 speeds, when you kick down, there's not like a sudden step. It just gets it just right. So it's very, very smooth when it comes to accelerating. It's also really good on the motorway, or should I say highway, because you've got 10 speeds, there's a really tall top gear. So you can just cruise along with the engine just barely ticking over. It's super, super relaxing. What I'm not finding quite so relaxing though is the steering. It's a little bit odd when you first start to turn the wheel. It's like almost totally disconnected from the front wheels. And that's by pickup standards. But when you're turning a bit more, the truck does actually do an all right job of going around corners. That's helped out by the fact that because a lot of the body panels are aluminium, it's relatively light for this kind of thing. The brakes, they're quite squidgy. Long travel in the pedal, but there's enough stopping power there. That's fine. One thing I am missing though, and that's the noise. No V8, no V8 rumble. Oh, it's such a shame, you know, that's a character of this truck, but it always was, that big, powerful V8 bellowing away, but no, now you've got a V6 turbo, which just doesn't sound as good. In fact, if you want a truck that sounds really good, click on the pop-out banner up there and go watch my video review of the Chevrolet Silverado. That's got a V8 in it. Finally, let's talk about comfort, because it's generally pretty good. What I do notice though is that the load bed seems to be skipping about a bit over bumps. Obviously it'd be better when you've got it fully loaded in the back because it'll weigh it down. But I've been in the States for a week now and I've hardly seen any trucks with anything in their load beds. People just drive them like cars with nothing in the back. So you're gonna be feeling that for most of the time you're driving it, which could get a little bit annoying. Yes, it's a truck, but it's actually a pretty decent truck to drive.
So then, what's my final verdict on the Ford F-150? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the F-150. It's got great turbocharged engines and impressive load lugging capability. However, it's not the very nicest truck to drive or to sit in. Swing that in there. Oh, FX4.